The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Usteros here with realagriculture.com. I am here today in a field, yes, in a field, folks, with Jeremy Boyshin, who's an agronomy research extension specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How is it going today? It's wonderful, Kara. We are standing in a field in southern Alberta, a winter wheat field of all things. The wind is blowing, which is no surprise here in southern Alberta, and we're having a great time. Yes, absolutely. The sun is shining, so that's really what counts. And uh, this winter winter wheat field is loving it. We are here today to talk about winter wheat survivability. Uh, Do you want to talk a bit about what what sorts of things producers should be looking out for at this time of the year? For sure. So we are getting into spring timing, especially in southern Alberta. Things are starting to warm up. The soil is starting to warm up. So we want to be getting out there and seeing what our winter survivability of our winter wheat is looking like, which means going out, taking a walk in the field, not just driving by, but getting into the field and pulling out that measuring tape, pulling out your boot or whatever you have to measure and getting an idea of how many of those plants are actually actually survive the winter. Um, depending on where you were, you had better or worse survivability. There's a lot of things that factor into winter survivability of winter wheat. We're talking about variety selection, uh, how much residue and uh, how much straw is on that soil to protect those that, that winter wheat as it's coming through. So there's a lot of different factors, so it's important to get out to your own field and, and take a look. Okay, so let's talk about some of those factors. What are, what are you looking for when you're pulling those, uh, when you're digging, you're looking at those roots? Yeah, so, I mean, we're going to walk to different parts of the field. Um, You want to be picking good parts of the field where you think that survivability may have been a bit better, where you had more snow cover, where you have a little bit better soil, as well as those low areas. And you're digging up those plants. You're taking a look at that root system. You're taking a look at the area just above uh, the seed and seeing what that color of that that root system and what that stem looks like. You're looking for a nice white color. Um, You know, some of those those, uh, leaves at the top, they're going to have some some burning to them and that's all part of that winter survival and getting through the winter you're going to have some of those leaves burning off but you're really looking for uh, a good strong root system uh, and a good strong uh, little bit of stem beneath the surface there Um, and you're you're going to be pulling those up and you're going to be counting them so get an idea of how many plants per square foot or plants per meter squared you're dealing with you know typically in Alberta we're aiming for a seeding rate uh, of anywhere between uh, 40 and 45 plants per square foot or 400 to 450 uh, seeds per meter squared Um, so when we talk about survivability of winter wheat typically we're getting in the range of when we when we look in the spring uh, in around 200 to 300 seeds or plants per meter squared that are surviving or if you want to put that into plants per foot squared 20 to 30 plants per foot squared when you start getting below 15 below 10 plants per foot squared um, that's when you start getting into that risk area of is this worth keeping Um, should I be taking it out or overseeding it depending what your next option is so if you're if you're looking at potentially reseeding I know right now I mean we're about mid-march so we probably should be just waiting a little bit but uh, at what point do you really have to look at reseeding so absolutely care I mean, we are very early in spring right now. Um, So making a decision on your crop right now is going to be super early, especially for those producers who are even further north, uh, north of Red Deer and even close to Edmonton. Um, We really want to be waiting and making those decisions based on when you would normally want to seed a different crop into that field. So if you were typically seeding spring wheat into that field, you want to align that decision of, am I keeping this this winter wheat crop um, based on the normal timeline that you would for spring? wheat of course if you're putting in spring wheat then you have to worry about uh, you know is winter wheat going to be coming up Um, can I be putting this into to a feed market Uh, but if you're doing something um, like a broadleaf so like peas or fabas uh, then the herbicides you're going to be using in crop are going to help clean that up but you're really looking at that timing of when do I typically seed in this field for a spring crop uh, and looking to make that decision a little bit ahead of that so you can properly align your your next best option if you feel like that winter wheat isn't surviving but the goal is to really give that winter wheat an opportunity to flourish if you see a lot of 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 these seedlings that maybe they look questionable whether they're going to survive 
dig some of them up from the good areas, from the bad areas, bring them inside and give them an opportunity to grow inside. This will really give you an idea of whether they have the potential to survive. And then you can assess whether you're gonna give them a little bit more time to grow uh, as that soil and as that, that air temperature warms up uh, or whether you're going to potentially terminate or, or overseed with another crop. So as you're looking at that, as you're bringing them inside and evaluating what can be done with them, um, what sorts of things are you looking for as well in that that growth, I guess? So you're, you're really just looking at, you know, am I getting any new growth? Does it look like there's new roots coming on? And those new roots are going to be fresh looking. They're going to be very white. Um, you're going to get potentially some new top growth coming out from that. Um, and if you're seeing those, then you know that it has survived the winter. You know that it's going to come back. Uh, I mean, to be honest, you can walk into a winter wheat field in early spring and it looks absolutely horrendous. You know, you, there's a lot of brown leaves going on there, but given some warm temperatures that that winter wheat will really spring back uh, and, and have the the potential to be a really strong crop. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, that's everything, Caria. Other than I am super excited that we're heading towards another season and to be out in the field again. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much.